We're safely on the rolling waves. Don't you think it's time you showed us your face, mystery monk? Prince Percival! When the time comes, he'll make a good hostage, if nothing else. The whole island's a prison. It's like a secret fort or something. An exorcist. Headless knights. Come, Moana. If anything happens, call for me and I'll come running to protect you, okay? Okay. You stay safe too, Eleanor. Velvet, you're a Therian? But because Velvet escaped, the malevolence went out of control. Velvet is a Therian, is she? I knew there was something off about her. But it's what she cried out that's really on my mind. Laffy said, is Velvet truly Lord Artorius' younger sister? She never told me. If it were true, I suppose it would explain her knowledge of Lord Artorius' training. If you're so curious, why not ask her yourself? Hey Velvet, what's your connection to Artorius? Uh, Rokuro, have some tact! I heard you whispering. It doesn't bother me. Artorius was married to my late sister, Selica. He was our brother-in-law. We lived together for more than ten years. That does explain a few things. So he sacrificed his little brother and turned his sister into a Therian. But... you were his family. To his view of the grand scheme, family is inconsequential. The needs of the many outweigh the needs of the few. All he did was act according to his ideal logic. <sighs> well, enough chit-chat. Let's get moving. out that Velvet is a Therian who consumes malevolence. And too much malevolence is what changes people into demons. Strong enough malevolence can persist after the person who created it dies. 
turning their corpse or spirit into a raging monster. That's how undead and phantom demons come about. Then the demons Velvet killed turned back into humans because she devoured their malevolence. Yeah, and consequently, they avoided becoming undead or anything like that. So she saved them. Well, I mean, a corpse is a corpse, of course, of course. Do you think she could devour only the malevolence and turn a living demon human again? Unfortunately, that's impossible due to malevolence's self-reinforcing nature. When Therians are connected to Enominot through an Earth Pulse point, they seem to be able to absorb small concentrations of malevolence from the surrounding area and inhibit the creation of new demons. But any human who builds up enough malevolence to turn into a demon will keep producing malevolence as long as they live. That's right. To devour any malevolence, I need to cut it off at the source. That's how my powers work. Velvet, I'm sorry. I don't mind it. Actually, I find it convenient. This way, I'll never forget my hatred for Artorias. Plus, as long as you stay away from an Earth Pulse point, you get to keep the power of any malevolence you consume. Fuel for my hatred, yes. Oh. This must be the true survivor of the venomization process. Oh, I get it! The dying exorcist lady wasn't saying Headless Knight is back. She was going for Headless Knight on horseback. Whatever the case, we'll fight whoever we have to to claim this island. Get close and look if you're that curious. That's venomization, all right. Definitely stronger than that headless lump of armor. I beg your pardon? Not you.
barbarian. Actually, that hawk is Griffin, my one and only friend. <laughs> A damned Therian. So that's what Tabitha meant when she said we'd find out shortly. But your highness, why do you have a Therian? It's like I said, Griffin has been my dear friend ever since I was a child. Even if he's a Therian now, that hasn't changed. So you knew you were helping a Therian escape. What are you plotting? <sighs> I have no plots or schemes. I just want Griffin to be free. I guess we shouldn't be surprised. The crown prince and future king, he's gonna do whatever he likes. <laughs> I suppose I am at that. But if I am, it's the first time I've ever been allowed a choice of my own. When you're a prince, you're not a person. You're an institution, one designed to serve the state and its people. Say, for instance, you are doing your law studies and your back suddenly itches. What do you do? I mean, I'd scratch it. Who wouldn't? When I did that, my tutor gave me a whipping so hard the blood ran down my back. The reason being that I prioritized a personal feeling, that is to say my itch, over my studies in service of the state. Uh. Seeing Griffin lay claim to the skies, let me imagine my own freedom. It was my lone solace over the years. But then, he turned out to be responsive to Inominat's power. I take it the Midgand royal family is well aware that the Abbey is creating Therians? Of course. How could we not? The kingdom offers unequivocal support to Shepherd Artorius' vision of reason and will. Even so, if there was one thing I could never permit, it was seeing Griffin locked up and unable to fly. Never. I tricked the exorcist on guard and disabled the barrier. But then Griffin attacked the exorcist and killed him. That's why you said you could never go back. Eh, they can overlook a single dead exorcist. But with Etherian removed, malevolence will engulf the capital. I knew full well what I was doing. And yet, I couldn't watch my friend's life be stripped away. Your Highness. He chose a single bird over the world. Why do you think that birds fly? Uh, that's what Lord Artorius asked me. My anatomy book says birds can fly because their bones are light and their wing muscles are enormously strong. Birds fly because a bird that cannot fly is no bird at all. That's what I think. I understand now. As long as you remain on this island, you may do as you please. But if you try to escape, I'll kill you. That should work. This way we'll have him on hand if we ever need a hostage. Understood. I appreciate you letting Griffin and me stay here. Well, now that that's taken care of, let's build ourselves a hideout. Wasn't she just playing with you? Yeah, but then she left. I'm worried because she looked pretty sad. Can you go find her? Why me? <sighs> all right, all right, fine. Just don't cry on me, okay? Huh. 
A most interesting interpretation. What do you make of this part here, then? Hmm... Well, if you pronounce it Loney Kyle, then it'd mean Midriff, which probably isn't right. Maybe Muse Mila? Well, that would make this passage read, Porges are nummy. Uh, okay, yeah, that's not right either. <laughs> <sighs> What's wrong, Velvet? Have you seen Eleanor? No, I haven't. Sorry, I know I'm supposed to watch her. Just... Read somewhere where there's more light. You'll hurt your eyes like this. Uh, okay. Hey, Rokuro, have you seen Eleanor? Uh, probably. I don't know. Get drunk. Just try not to go overboard. But, man, are we a bunch of screw-ups or what? I mean, we've kidnapped a prince now. They gotta have laws against that. Broke out of prison, flattened Helovis, tried to assassinate a shepherd. Hey, how many infractions do you think we're on the hook for? Pardon me if I don't stop and count. If you don't like it, nobody's forcing you to tag along. No. I still haven't repaid my debt to you. You say that, but you really just want to beat Shigure, don't you? Whoa. To me, they're both connected. It's a long story, but I can tell you if you... I'll pass. Well, join me for a drink then? Can't. I'm 19. You got any idea where Eleanor is? No, sorry. I was having a meeting with Benwick and the crew about our search for Eifried. Are you sure you're okay with putting that off? At this point, the Abbey doesn't have much reason to keep him alive. Wouldn't you rather look for him than Therians? I know time is a factor, but we still don't have any decent leads. I think we need to stir up the Abbey and see what shakes loose. And who better to do that than you? So this works for both of us, then? Never fear. I'm still acting out of self-interest. Besides, Eifried won't die so easily. He's a strong man. It'd take a lot to bring him down. Yeah. I've never seen him flinch from a storm, no matter how choppy the seas. Where angels fear to tread, as they say. <laughs> Probably some of that as well. Hey, any idea where Eleanor went? How should I know? I'm too busy to spare any time worrying about anyone else. You look pretty distinctly unoccupied to me right now. Right, I'm busy being unoccupied. You're... what? It's simple. When you have free time, it means you're busy trying to avoid having any business to do. You're too weird for this world, Mogulu. Says the woman with the world's blandest personality. I always figured you'd be the type to take off as soon as things got hairy. So what keeps you here? I am utterly, completely, totally, wholly devoid of anything else to do. Which is to say I'm... Unoccupied. Right, now you get it. Besides, I have to stick around to see how our bet turns out, don't I?
Is worried about you. You actually came looking for me? Can't say no to a crying child. Uh, indeed. She may be Ethereum now, but deep down, she's still a lonely little girl. That's something I've come to realize in traveling with you all. Wretched demons and Therians, even the Malakim who I'd only thought of as tools. They all live and think as humanly as the rest of us. Mm. I was so clueless. I didn't know what Demon Blight really was, nor what the Abbey was doing. Through it all, I... I knew nothing beyond blind belief in whatever I was taught. Ignorance is bliss, as they say. The coward's path is not that of an exorcist. They may say... I didn't know anything, so I can't be blamed. I can't... I can't live like that. <sighs> I think I'll stay here a little longer to cool my head off. Please tell Kamoana I'm alright. Don't stay out too long. The sea breeze can get cold. Thank you. Don't get the wrong idea. If you got sick or something, Kamoana and Lafisa would worry. That's all. I have something to say. There's something I've been hiding, until now. I've been acting undercover on a special mission for Lord Artorius. I was to watch over the Malik Lafiset and bring him to Abbey Headquarters. So vital was the mission, I was to do whatever it took, even kill my fellow exorcists. You are gonna take me to them. I'm sorry for deceiving you, Laffy said. Originally, I was going to get you to lower your guard, then take you in. 
However, I no longer intend on following the Abbey's orders. You're turning your back on Artorias? No. I still believe in the sincerity of Lord Artorias. That the world he seeks is one that will benefit all humankind. But nevertheless, I simply cannot bring myself to condone the methods he has chosen to achieve that vision, so... I will help you protect the Therians, until I discover the answer I seek. Eleanor! I want to live a life that I don't have to be ashamed of, and to do that, I have to learn the truth for myself. <laughs> so, you live by your emotions after all. Maybe you've found your own creed. Welcome to our wonderful world of wickedness. Don't equate us. To act in opposition of one's feelings is to act opposed to reason. You never make things simple, do you? You should be glad I don't. Yeah, after all, she's my vessel. Yes, yes. So, I think our next order of business is to find ourselves another Therian. Well, that's the extent of my insight. Anyone got any actual leads? What if we had Eleanor swipe some intel on them from the Abbey? That could work. I don't know. It wouldn't work. Officially, the Abbey still considers her a traitor, so who would leak anything to her? Yeah. Besides, we can't put Lafayette in danger like that. And anyway, Eleanor's terrible at being a spy. Ungracious, but accurate. You know that special underground cell from yesterday? I want to go back there. There's something I want to try out. Alright, let's go. Prove my courage by sailing out to a class 4 island. Now I can handle myself, but man, it ain't fun and games there. I nearly got killed by demons. You actually stepped foot on a class 4 island? Not even. I was still approaching it by ship when this stuff that looked like spider silk started spreading round. These bug looking demons were using the stuff to try and climb aboard my ship. Damnation! The crew cut those threads as fast as anything, and we got the hell out of there. The whole thing left me bawling. Well, I'm glad to see you made it out safely. I'd suggest not going near there again. <laughs> oh no, I wasn't planning on it. I had enough of that place to last me a lifetime. Looks like you'd like this island. Fly free, noble hawk. Hunt to your heart's content, Grocky. Grocky?
map of the world was made by... Wow! It took them decades! You always look so happy when you've got your nose in a book. What's so interesting about the one you've got there? It's a book about surveying. When I read it, I can imagine myself traveling afar and making maps of the world. It sounds like so much fun. I know just how you feel. I know Mogulu and the others don't understand. But I just can't help but feel excited when I think about us completing a map of the entire world. It's the thought of treasure that gets me more fired up! Obviously, there's treasure waiting to be unearthed too, but that's more of a bonus on the side. Crossing uncrossable oceans, going to lands where none have gone before, the voyage itself, the dance with death, these things hold value greater than that of any treasure. Ah, adventure! Truly the romance of the quest we call life! Luffy said, you had a map, didn't you? The one you dropped when we first met? It's a world map I got when I was with the Abbey, but I only checked out the places really close by. I could hardly call it adventure. There's more to adventuring than visiting far-off lands and sailing stormy seas, you know. Adventures are about achieving your ambitions and leaping across the walls we've built to protect ourselves, no matter the danger that waits on the other side. There are no big or small adventures. Even if I only went to Helavis and the Fegal Ice Caps? Think of it like this. When you sneaked out of town without the Abbey noticing, when you walked the land and compared it to your map, how did that make you feel? It was scary, but fun. Exhilarating. Then it was an adventure. The map you made within yourself is a treasure that's only yours. Wow! My very own treasure! I'll take the lead.
We're here. What now? Well, so I've been thinking about Earth Pulse points. They're where the flow of the Earth Pulse, the Earth's natural forces, are concentrated. Right. And Inominat is using those points to acquire malevolence and reawaken himself. You seem to have a knack for sensing them out. Once you're close enough, you can even pinpoint their location. Except, I don't have to be close at all. When we came here yesterday, I felt another place. A place just like this. Are you saying you can use this Earth Pulse Point as a conduit to find the others? I think so. I don't know how far it works, and I can't say if Ethereum will be on the other end. Still, it'll give us something real to go on. Please, give it a try. Okay. Anything? Yes, I felt it. There are dozens of Earth Pulse points scattered around, but I sensed a few big ones that stood out. So you can even detect their size? Yeah, at least I think I can. This island is one of the big ones. There are two more like it somewhere to the east and the southeast. But I think those are the Warg Forest and the Temple of Palamedes. Still... That suggests we're more likely to find Therians at the larger Earth Pulse points. We've got three Therians to go. Anything that helps us narrow down our choices is a boon. Yeah, you've done great work today, Lafayette. That's for sure. Thank goodness you're here. You're a marvel. One of the wonders of the world, kiddo! It's not that big of a deal, really. Hmm... Then let's go Therian hunting. We have an honest to goodness lead, or dishonest to badness in our case. Broke again. Still not good enough. You think it's your swords that are weak? You don't think maybe your body's just stupid tough? No. If it can't cut me, it's just not good enough. I need stronger materials to make a better sword. I'd love to try Orichalcum, but getting that stuff is next to impossible. Orichalcum? That's the strongest metal in the world, right? A rare metal that's only been found in ancient ruins, and seldom at that. I've seen fragments of the metal myself. But I've never even heard of a piece large enough to forge into a weapon. I have. I heard a rumor that a block of orichalcum was discovered in an ancient ruin some 200 years ago. Unfortunately, the boat carrying it sank in a storm. From the depths of the earth to the depths of the sea. A sunken ship. Treasure at the bottom of the sea. <sighs> that would stir any sailor's heart. If we knew where to find it, could it be salvaged? The ship's crew drowned, so nobody knows where she sank. Besides, it's a centuries-old rumor. Who's to say it's even true? Right. <laughs> no sense in wishing for what can't be gotten. I'm sure there's other material you can use. <laughs> even Dial makes a good point sometimes. Hey, what do you mean, even Dial? Even Dial's getting angry! Saying it like that's just weird, Kamoana. Even Kamoana is getting weird! <laughs> Alright, so our target is an Earth Pulse Point about as big as the one here. Let's start with the closest one and go from there. Which way is it? The closest one is to the west. Got it. Lead the way, Lafayette. My pleasure. Lafayette, I must offer you an apology. 
What for? For spying. I was plotting to take you back to the Abbey. I am truly sorry. It was your mission, wasn't it? Somehow I think I always knew. You... you did? Call it a hunch. Besides, Velvet was really suspicious of you. Whenever you feel you're doing something wrong, you start to sweat a lot. It seemed odd. How long have you known? Ever since you became a vessel for me. I think Velvet knew too. <sighs> That's quite a shock. I failed completely in my role as a spy. <laughs> it's pathetic. Shameful, really. Well, I think it says something good about you. Huh? Someone who can't lie well seems like a better person than someone who has an easy time of it. Thank you, Luffy said. I think you're the better person here. I wouldn't go that far. Hmm? What are you doing here, Bianfu? I was hoping you'd let me join in! We're in the middle of something important. Please leave us be for now. I'll be quiet! Just let me hang around, alright? Afraid not. Bien! <laughs> Madame Eleanor is a mealy head! She's a what? Laffy said. Thank you. I hope we can stay friends. I hope so too, Eleanor. The exploration of the Outer Seas is going super well. Yeah. It's all thanks to you guys chipping in. Oh, we haven't done all that much. Well, don't rest on your laurels just yet. Worse things happen at sea, you know. The scouting ship could always get eaten by some giant tentacled horror from the deeps. Danger's a part of the job. Besides, Ifreed's pirates are all about venturing into the unknown. I wonder what's still hidden out there for us to find. Terror Island, for one thing. According to ancient legends, it's an island that moves across the outer seas like a ship. Really? I've never heard of an island like that. Nobody knows if it's real or not, which is exactly why we have to try and find it ourselves. Awesome! I can't wait to get to the bottom of this! Don't get too excited just yet, kiddo. It's good to have enthusiasm and all, but I bet this place is called Terror Island for a reason. I'm not too worried. Like Aizen said, challenging the unknown is what Ifrid's pirates do, no matter what the risk. <sighs> Looks like you've caught the bug too. <laughs> Looks like it. Hey, Bienfu, I have a question for you. I know Magilu likes to call herself a witch and all that, but what is she really? The obvious guess would be that she's an exorcist, but I don't think I ever saw her name in the roster. That's not surprising! She is indeed a bona fide dark witch! I should know! I saw one night just how scary she could be! It's enough to keep you awake at night! It was near the crater of a volcano! Above the bubbling magma sat a huge cauldron! Inside the cauldron, a blood-red liquid stickily simmered, boiling in the hellfire heat. When droplets splattered onto Miss Mogilu's cheeks, she just cackled and licked it off, and she kept the cauldron boiling for three days and three nights. What was she making? Strawberry jam. What? What's scary about that? I was just getting to the scary part. Instead of using sugar, she put in soy sauce, cooking wine, and liquor! Soy sauce and strawberries? Is that normal? You wouldn't think so, but that contrasted sweetness, sourness, and saltiness actually makes it taste great. Not that someone like you would understand the appeal. You have to have a refined palate like mine to appreciate it. Wait, I've heard of that. You can boil things in soy sauce and wine to preserve them. When you do it with strawberries, it's called strawberry soup. That's right! Actually, strawberry soup has sea urchin and abalone, not strawberries. 
It's just called that because the sea urchin plumps up like berries. And it's not preserved either. Really? Well, I had no idea! Wow, I really liked it too! I wonder if the reason she's never made it for me again is because she realized the mix-up! Now that I think about it, that's not the only thing I like that she made one time! Like durian jellies and the candied sweet fish too! I think I see what's going on here. What does the food she's made more than once taste like? It's just normal stuff, like what you guys always have! Only a truly scary witch could hide that much cooking talent behind such plain tasting food with no one the wiser! I understand why the Abbey turned this island into a prison. The waters here are filled with rapid sea currents. Make a single wrong turn of the rudder, and your ship will be capsized just like that. Not to mention the fog and all the storms that pass by. It must be nearly impossible to escape. Aye. To get on and off this island, you'd need a vast store of nautical knowledge and a skilled hand. Thanks to your curse, Eisen, we've gotten good enough to handle rough seas like this. The storm that kicked up when we made our escape was huge, and all we had were three novice sailors. Thinking back on it, we had some seriously good luck. I know this smell. Yeah, it's Prince Percival's fragrant wood perfume. When I told him I'd never smelled it before, he put a little on my sleeve to try it out. I love the smell of the royal family's perfume. It's distinct, but not overpowering. It's made from Fandaria trees, conifers that grow in a snowy land. I've noticed that you and Velvet and Mogilu smell nice, too. Do you all wear the same perfume? We do? We don't use that stuff, but maybe you're smelling the soap we use. Oh, can only the royal family wear fragrant wood? No. Some fragrances, including the Fandaria-scented ones, only the royal family can use, but most don't have any such restriction. If they all smell so good on humans, why doesn't everyone use them? You know, I've never thought about that. Why do you think that is, Aizen? It's a bit complicated. To explain it right, I'd have to start with the history of bathing in Midgand. A few hundred years ago, people believed they would die if they took a bath. They were so terrified of baths that they wouldn't even go near one. I can't believe people would be scared of taking a bath. Why would that even happen? Well, at the time, a deadly plague was running rampant, and people thought that it could be transmitted through bath water. Bear in mind that this was all before we had proper plumbing or techniques to purify water. People couldn't just bathe anywhere. Sewers like the one we used to sneak through Logris are a fairly recent construction, only around a century old. Some people even thought bathing at all was unhygienic. Right. As bathing went out of style, the royal family started to use these fragrant woods. Covering up their bad smell with a good one. Yep. As a result, their perfumes used to be far more potent, to the point where you couldn't even tell if it smelled good anymore. But nowadays, nobody actually believes that bathing can make you sick, right? As civilization advanced, plumbing became widespread, and baths themselves became much cleaner fixtures than they used to be. And the fragrant woods fell out of favor because they were no longer necessary, right? To the contrary. As the people gained prosperity, the perfumes became a popular display of wealth. The newfound popularity didn't last long, however, thanks to the propagation of a new disease. One that didn't transmit through baths. Demon blight, you mean? With the rise of demon attacks, life outside the city walls became increasingly difficult. With fragrant woods now harder to come by, the perfumes once again became the domain of royalty. I guess that means that fragrant woods share a long and complicated history with plagues. To cover up the truth of malevolence, the powers that be spread rumors of a demon plague, continuing their time-honored tradition of covering up one stink with another. <laughs> so... What do you think of the perfume? Do you like it? 
Yeah, it smells nice. But I think I like the smell of soap better. Huh? This island is so amazing! It's far away from any other people and has so much hidden stuff underground! It's such a perfect hideout! Just thinking about it makes me so excited to be here! Yeah, I guess. What's wrong? You were so excited to be here before! Don't be such a drag, Lafayette! It's just that this used to be a prison. People were brought here to suffer. If you're worried about how I feel, don't be. If I really hated this place, I wouldn't have made it my base. Hell, I was imprisoned here too, but now it's the secret fort I always dreamed of. I still haven't forgiven the guard who ate all those Maron glaces I was sent. I'll let the past be the past. What part of secret fort are you not getting? Yeah. But it can't all be just for fun and games here either. In order to maximize the success of our future battles, we need to maintain and improve this base going forward. This place seems sturdy as it is. Does it really need more work put into it? Nonsense. This place was built to specialize in holding prisoners. We can make it better suit our needs. What are you proposing exactly? Well, I think we need to start with smokescreen generators. They'll be effective against intruders unfamiliar with the layout here. Of course, afterwards we'll have to clean up all the soot, but still. No thanks. I think we need something to put out fires. The fire at Helavis was really scary. We have Malakim like you who could use water arts, though. If anything happens, you can just put it out. Oh yeah, I guess that's true. What we really need are some secret underground tunnels. If things get too hairy here, we'll need an underground escape route. We can put in hidden doors and even some fake ones to trick the enemy too. We have two separate docks. That's good enough. No enemy is going to attack without taking both docks into consideration. That's why we need to build underground tunnels before anything else. But we're on an island. You know, surrounded by water. Where would these tunnels even lead to? Isn't it obvious? We'll dig underneath the sea to another uninhabited island nearby. But there are no other islands nearby. If it means getting my tunnels, I'll build an island too. Are you listening to what you're saying? It sounds like he's daydreaming to me. And what's wrong with having some dreams? This is a great opportunity we have here. You guys just don't get it. It's okay. I get where you're coming from, but they'll never understand. You might as well save your breath. Thank you.